Right, it's that time of the week. Uh, Words with extraordinaire Kel Richards joins me now from Sydney. Uh, a bit of an energy flavour to, to kick off this week, Kel. Um, Nick from Melbourne says, I keep hearing the term baseload power. What's uh, Kel's take? He wants it explained. Uh, go ahead. Well, I had to do a bit of research on this. I mean, I thought it just meant, you know, good, solid, reliable power supply, but it doesn't. It turns out that it means minimum power, the bare minimum to keep the system going. In fact, there's a correspondent to my website, black name Rod, good evening, Rod, who knows about this stuff and who helped me do all the, the, the research. It is the minimum amount of power needed to keep the system on the air. And it is normally measured at 3 a.m., on Christmas Day each year, because that apparently is the lowest demand there ever, ever is on the system. Now, Rod tells me at the moment, uh, at the last time it was measured, last Christmas Day, it was 18 gigawatts. Now, I take it that's 18 gigawatts an hour. And he says if it falls below that, the system crashes. The lights go out, the freezers uh, lose their power, the refrigerators, everything just goes. Every computer just goes. So 18 gigawatts an hour is the minimum, and we somehow need to find a way to make sure that minimum is always met. That's what baseload power means. One of the other realities of an electricity system is you can't store it. I mean, you can in very micro terms, but we don't have big scale batteries to meet anywhere near the demand of a 24-7 lifestyle. So the other thing that's very much mixed up in power is the dispatchability of the power, that term dispatchable power. Nick wanted to know a bit more about that as well. Yeah, a lot of people keep hearing this, and I've had a number of people say to me, what, what on earth does dispatchable power mean? It basically means power stations, power generators that could be turned on and off at relatively short notice to be ramped up or ramped down. Because uh, Rod was explaining to me, the guy who understands this, that demand and supply have to equal each other in an electricity system in, in the grid. So he said whenever demand goes up, supply has to go up. So you need somewhere that you can say, turn on, give us more power now in the next few minutes or within 60 minutes of now or whatever. So, you know, gas generators can do that. Coal generators can do that. Reservoir-based hydro can do that sort of thing. You need dispatchable power mm. because the demand goes up and down. Of course, uh, fields of solar panels can't do that. Uh, wind generators can't do that. They can't suddenly generate more power because the demand's gone up another four or five gig uh, gigawatts. So dispatchable power is that sort of standby emergency stuff that could be turned on and off, and that's vital for the system to keep running. Now, we've done this before with other country and capital names. I mean, Paris is, is Paris, it's not Paris. Uh, Florence is Florence, not Firenze. But the island nation of Kiribati is not spelt Kiribati. So why do we say Kiribati, but we won't say Chile? We say Chile. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, we, we, the rule is, as you just said, that is th if there's an established English pronunciation, that's what we use. As it happens, in Australia, there is an established English pronunciation for the place spelt Kiribati but pronounced Kiribati. And the reason is we are a Pacific nation. We've had so much contact with it for so long. If you go back to the days of the Burnsville Trading Company, Australians have always been travelling to the Pacific, so we know how they're pronounced locally. That information came back here and it became the standard English pronunciation, and at least in Australia. It's why we say Nandi Airport, even though there's no N in the way it's spelled it when we're talking about Fiji. That's true. We are a Pacific nation, and so we know the way the Pacific peoples say their, their names, and we've adopted them as standard English pronunciations here. So that's why that applies to somewhere like Kiribati, where we would, as you said, we wouldn't do that with a place like Chile. It is not Chile, it is Chile, and has been for a long time. I had a terrific one from Lynn in DY on who and that, but I'm going to leave it for next week and uh, encourage people to head to my Instagram page, Peter Credlin AO. Leave me your words. Obviously, you can go to Kel's uh, website, ozwords.com.au. Leave the words for next week. We'll get on to all of them. Kel, thank you as always.